computer. <clears throat> all right, guys, we are recording. So I just want to thank you guys, first of all, for joining me for this sister circle. Uh, a little, little preview since we are recording this to share. So we have a community called Sparkle and Rise. And in that community, we have over 600 Rise sisters. It's a Facebook community. And one of the things that we do, it's been described as the heart of the community, is sister circles. And I, I just am always so amazed at the power of a sister circle and the difference that it makes in the lives of the women in our community. Um, and I've struggled with getting people to sign up. It's a very vulnerable thing to do. And I think one of the reasons why um, we, we struggle a little bit with the signups is because they don't really know what it's like. And I thought, well, what better way to do it than have one and record it so that our sisters can really get a feel for what the sister circle is all about. So um, inside the Facebook group, I have an offer for up to two sister circles a month. And what it is, is where a sister says, one of our Rise sisters will reach out to me and say, hey, I've, I'm stuck, love to have a sister circle. So I post it in the discussion thread and we limit it to no more than 10 participants um, because it is a very intimate experience, except for when you post it all over social media. And, um, and I've never recorded them before. I'm gonna change that going forward. I will record them, but I'll only send it to the sister in the circle so that she has a, a reference to go back and look at. And then she can decide what she does um, with the recording. So the format is we go around the sister circle, everyone introduces themselves. So I'll have everyone here on the call, just give a 30 minute, inter, 30 minute a 30 second introduction. Tell us your name, where you're from and how you found Rise Sisters. And then I'll take about five minutes and I'll share a challenge that I'm having. And then my sisters in the sister circle will give me ideas on things I can do, maybe things I haven't thought of um, to help me overcome that challenge and just really help lift me up. I think one of the most beautiful things about sister circles, besides the, the love and support you get, is that we all learn together, right? So everyone who participates really leaves with, oh my gosh, like I really learned something and I was able to connect with my Rise sister. So just a super cool experience. So um, y'all just forget the camera's rolling and we're gonna, um, we're gonna get started. Uh, so I'll go last since it is my sister circle um, with the description of who I am. Well, I guess I should tell you guys who I am first and then I'll share my problem last. So I'm Carla Howard. I started uh, Sparkle and Rise in April. I was ter felt terribly disconnected from people with COVID. I love surrounding myself with ambitious, supportive women and uh, total transparency have in my corporate life. So I, I was in corporate for about 30 years and I stepped out full time in um, about a year and a half ago into entrepreneurship and just really struggled to find that community of women that we could just lift each other up, support each other, celebrate our successes. And um, then feeling so disconnected during COVID, I thought, well, let's try it. Let's try it on Facebook and see what happens. So that is really what started uh, Sparkle and Rise. So I'm actually going to call people to kind of introduce yourself so we can keep it rolling. Um, Rhonda, would you please introduce yourself to the group? Rhonda Feig, I hope I said that right. It's close. Good morning. I'm Rhonda Fague, uh, Vancouver, Washington, and I create aha moments that help people learn key information to move the business forward by partnering with leadership across organizations. And due to COVID, I'm looking for my next great opportunity. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Um, and uh, Anna, brand new, brand new to Sister Circles. Do you mind sharing a little bit about yourself? Hi, I'm Anna Kale, and I've known Carla about a year. I went to one of her conferences. That's how we met. And um, I'm in transition right now because of COVID also. Lost, um, lost a role just this summer. Our whole team was eliminated. So I'm kind of in transition trying to figure out my next um, opportunity. I've been consulting, and that's going well. But I, I do miss the, the corporate camaraderie. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm in... Um, learning and development and organization development. So helping people on a large scale is what I'm used to doing. Consulting is not quite such a large scale. So, and where uh, are you at, Anna? Where do you live? I'm in Southeast, um, the 
Southeast Phoenix Valley, Mesa, Arizona. Perfect. And Rhonda, where, where are you at? Vancouver, Washington. Perfect. Um, Ann Ahern. Hi, I'm Ann Ahern. I'm also from the Phoenix area. Um, I have, was introduced to the Speckle and Rise group through an Institute of Internal Auditors conference in June. Um, it was just an amazing presentation from Carla and I wanted to be part of this and learn more about it. And it's been a great, great experience. I encourage everyone to join. Thank you, Anne. Um, Stacy Siekman. Hi, I'm Stacy Siekman and I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. And I actually met Carla over the summer, I think it was, right, Carla? Like I think, early, yeah. Right before you started Sparkle and Rise. So that's how <laughs> I was introduced to it. I was kind of one of the initial members of it. So, um, but I'm a life and intentional movement coach and I love helping um, Christian women not just thrive, but move through the midlife madness with a confident spirit. So glad to be thank, here. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Hello, I'm Beth. I'm in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, I met Carla not too long ago on a Zoom call. <laughs> um, I am currently, well, I've been furloughed from my corporate job. I'm a corporate travel agent, um, but um, have started a leisure travel company um, a couple of months ago, but I've been in the travel since 1992. Um, so I've been up in the ups and downs of the travel industry. Um, and I currently just started also my own business of virtual assistance. So um, my business name is Busy Bee, and my motto is we take the busy out of your day. So if you honestly know anybody that's looking to concentrate more on their job than their back office, definitely let me know. And um, I'm happy to be here. Well, we're happy you're here. Sandy Boucher. Oh, you're on mute, sister. There you go. Oh, here, I'm gonna ask you to unmute. It, it says muted. I just sent you an ask to unmute. Okay, sister, you figure that out and I'm gonna scoot over to Stacy Kurtzendorfer. You're Hi, everyone. Sorry. Go ahead. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. I okay. I should be unmuted. So hi, everyone. Um, I met Carla <laughs> a long time ago, five years ago, um, virtually. So it was very uh, appropriate for a pre <laughs> It was like a foreshadowing for how things would go during the pandemic. So we met over the phone. I'm, and I was interested in getting into the field of change management. So Carla and I started having conversations five years ago and uh, she was an excellent uh, source of wisdom and subject matter expert, uh, both professional and personal. And then, um, sorry, what other questions did you want to know? Where am I from? I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. Canadian, uh, Canadian, but I've lived out and worked outside of Canada for 20 years. So I'm currently based in Kuwait and I do work in the field of change management. I'm with a group called Change Management Group. And at the moment we are working with um, a very large company here in, Tuwa in Kuwait doing huge scale transformation. So um, yeah, that's, that's my background. And uh, I managed to visit Carla twice in, uh, in Arizona, which was very cool. So we've also met in person as of um, a couple of years ago. Thank yeah, you. I collect <laughs> women. I invite them to my house all the time. My husband's like, who's staying with us now? She's great. You're going to love her. Uh, Sandy, I see you are <laughs> unmuted, sister, so share. I can do this now. Yes! Okay. Mishko Pagnan Quain and Dishnakas Mangdodem. Hi, everybody. I'm Sandy Boucher, Red Thunderbolt Woman of the Loon Clan. I'm a proud member of St. River First Nation in Northern Ontario, Canada. And thanks to my sister circle, I am now a self-identity and determination expert. I work with women of all cultural backgrounds to overcome huge hurdles like sexism and racism so they can become 
all they're meant to be. And I met Carla thanks to an email she sent me on LinkedIn to invite me to this network she described that sounded so amazing and it absolutely is. So I'm thrilled to be here. We're excited you're here. And Sarah Fawcett. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Fawcett. I'm originally from Liverpool in the UK, but now live in Leeds, been in Leeds for the past 16 years. I'm mum of two young boys, five and two, keep me busy. Um, and I met Carla, um, I liked one of her posts on LinkedIn and then found my way back to the Sparkle and Rise group on Facebook. And this group's the only reason I'm on Facebook because I don't particularly like Facebook. Um, but I, I stay on there for that reason. Um, so in terms of uh, me, I'm in between jobs as well. So I used to work for, I'm current, currently on leave from a global tech company. Uh, and I'm going to a very similar global tech company in January. Hence my uh, leave of absence right now. Um, both specialize in single board computing and IoT hardware, software platforms. So that's me. And I'm really happy to be here today to support you, Carla. Hopefully I can give you a different perspective of whatever challenge you have. Um, and thank you for including me and look forward to getting into it. Yeah, so thank you guys so much. I already feel that the tears welling up. So this may, there's always tears on these things, but they're gratitude tears, right? Um, so here's my challenge. Uh, my Since leaving my corporate role, so I was actually laid off about a year and a half ago. Best freaking thing that ever happened to me, I would like to say. Um, and I have two different sides of my business. So in my day job of, of consulting, I am a strategic change consultant. And that is work that really, really resonates with me. I absolutely love that work. Um, it's still not my passion though. My heart and my passion is all around supporting professional women, helping them live their dream life. And it's funny, I, I was, um, we do a book club in Sparkle and Rise and we were doing Dare to Lead. And I had two, you, you were supposed to come up with two things that really describe your values. And my two things were kindness and abundance. And not just abundance for me, I thought at first that felt really selfish. And we'll kind of talk about that because that's going to be a theme you hear from me. <laughs> um, you know, abundance, yes, for me and my life and my family, absolutely. And abundance for all of my Rise sisters. Like I have this huge passion to uplift women, to help them live their dream lives, to help them get out of their way, which is why we started Sister Circles. And if I could like wave a magic wand and craft my dream business, it would be to pour all of my time and attention into that, helping professional women rise. Um, inside of the Sparkle and Rise Facebook group, it is such a special vibe. We have 600 people in there, guys, and it is still special. The engagement over a 28-day period, we have over 500 women engaging in there with posts, comments, um, you know, likes. Uh, that is like off the charts engagement. So, uh, what I want to do is figure out how do I serve these women and grow that group and do it in a way that I can earn a living off of it and have that be my full-time focus. So here's the big struggle. There's a couple of big struggles y'all are going to have to get out, help me get out of my way on. One of the big struggles is I don't want to ruin that vibe, right? Because I didn't create it as a business. I created it as a support place, a safe place for women to land. Um, so all the stuff that's going on there is still going to go on. We're still going to have sister circles, entrepreneur circles. We do that. All these things are free, right? Coffee chats, happy hours. Um, uh, when a sister has a need. So we've got Charmin uh, Styles, who's going to do an Instagram circle for us later this week. Like all of that's still going to go on. How do I, without I don't want to see, I don't want people to feel like, oh, well, she just got us in here to sell to us, right? Like, no, that's not it. But how do I support and uplift these women and still be able to create a business that can sustain my lifestyle and create abundance for the group? So 
um, little kind of sneak peek into my background. I'm also a keynote speaker and I, right up until COVID, I had, you know, keynotes planned for professional women, for associations, um, workshops inside of corporate and associations, and all that stuff disappeared. I have an online class that I completed and I'll say launched, although I will tell you guys I suck at launching. Um, back in March for professional women called Create Career Success. It is a great class. Like the content is high quality. The, the worksheets are high quality. I've sold like five or six of them. Um, we launched a digital journal that is amazing. Janice Swanson took my chicken scratch that I do every morning and turned it into a beautifully designed digital journal. I know there's a market out there for digital journals. Um, I've sold five of them, which I am incredibly grateful for. I just am not tapping into that market. Um, and I have um, our hard copy journal that's going to be coming up early next year. I'm super excited about it. And I'm a little bit terrified because like, I don't need 300 journals in my room, y'all. So I don't want to order a bunch <laughs> and then not sell any, right? Um, so there's that one thing I have learned from this group is they'll ask for what they wanted. And so they've asked for a website. Brianna Harper stepped up and built us a website that we're launching this week. They've asked for events. So I'm actually doing a Christmas party at my house. <laughs> um, and so you guys can find that on, on the site. We're talking about doing a retreat, which Beth is, um, so graciously offered to help us with next year. Uh, and I struggle, I struggle a lot because the selling part doesn't feel good. I want to spend more time and attention on it. And I, I don't know how to, apparently I don't know how to launch very well because I've not had a lot of success there. Um, so I need y'all to help me get out of my own way and help me figure this one out. So the way this is going to work is you guys each have about five minutes on a different sister circle. I'd be typing the responses, but I'm just going to jot down a couple of notes. Um, and if you have questions for me, you can ask a couple of questions as we um, launch into the discussion. So who would like to go first? Help me solve all my problems. <laughs> Anne raised her hand. Um, okay, I'll go, I'll go okay. Anne first and then Beth. Oh, wait, hang on, Stace. Um, how about this? We had a bunch, okay. of, we had a bunch of first starters. Uh, I'm going to start with Stacy, and then I'll go to Beth and then I'll go to Anne. So Stacy. Hertzendorfer, okay. I should say which um, So, <laughs> no problem. Hi, Carla. Um, so, as I've known you a long time, I know that everything that you have launched is extremely high quality mm -hmm. and high value. And, you know, if I, if I didn't know you and somebody said, would you be willing to pay for this? I would say yes. It, um, so, my thought is, I understand what you, what you want to do, that you want to build this up as basically your full-time, your full-time business, right? I yes. mean, cause you, you work in change and you're very passionate about it, but you're even more passionate about helping other women. And as you say, serving other women, my thought is maybe you could ask the group and say, what would you be interested in and give people a list and then, um, figure out how much they would be willing to pay for it. And I don't want this to sound wrong because I know that you're not pushing sales, but uh, something like your mentoring, which you have done, how much would you, pay, would you be willing to pay, you know, a mentor or a coach? So if you had a list of like 10 to 15 things, you could, you could get more business intelligence around what people want and, and, um, what they'd be willing to pay. And I don't mean, again, that in the sense of you pushing it on anyone, but look, if you're going to find a mentor or a coach, let's say outside of what you do, you have to pay for it, right? And you'd have to pay a quite significant amount for that service for maybe somebody that you don't even know, right? And they're not tested. So I think as you build more um, engagement with the group, which you've already done already, people know you and trust you and they want to um, take advantage of your expertise and actually, you know, use whatever products and services you have to offer. So that's my two cents. I just think you're missing a bit of business intelligence around what people want and what they'd be willing to pay for and how much they would want to pay for it and how they would want to move forward as well. Thank you, Stacy. Super, super helpful. Um, Beth. Thank you. 
So um, pretty much going out off what Stacy said is kind of exactly what I was thinking. I mean, I've been in other groups um, where there were mentoring sessions that people would pay for, um, or, you know, I heard you said something, you have a course or something. I mean, if you also, if you push it a little bit more, I mean, you already have the establishment there. Um, it's just getting the word out more in different aspects than just the Facebook and, you know, you can reach out to people again on LinkedIn is very popular now. Um, so you can also build off the two models you already have. You just need to build it more. You need to figure where you need to establish it more. Maybe, um, I'm trying to think what else, but you definitely are in the right direction. You just need to step up into like what Stacey said with the mentoring. That's awesome. And then also the products you already have, try to build off of that a little bit more. I mean, you got that, those five. So try to make yourself a goal, you know, and um, the people are out there. They really are. That's so. what I keep telling myself. <laughs> They're there. They're there. I'm learning myself now with, you know, everything that I'm trying to do myself. They're out there. It may not be done tomorrow. It may not be done next week. It may not be done next month, but they're out there. Yeah, it's true. That's perfect. That's me. Thank you, Beth. Um, Ann Ahern. Okay, so <clears throat> obviously I'm not a coach, I'm in corporate America, but I had a couple of things that I thought about. Um, you mentioned the seminars and that you had some in-depth and some great um, groups that you could have, and maybe you start with a smaller group of three to five people or five to seven and offer them as a course. So um, I know that I attended that 30 minute, um, well, actually it was, I think it was an hour with the Institute of Internal Auditors, but um, give a little 30 minute presentation out there and then invite people to learn more details in a smaller close group with your materials, oh. um, seminars, and, and kind of find out from other people what they would charge for that. Um, I'm gonna throw Val out there as a resource for you to ask, because I know she does some of those kinds of things with her services that are a little different. Um, but again, asking other coaches what their thoughts are or how they started their business. Um, another thing that I highlighted that, that might help you as far as the sales and marketing, and I totally understand because selling yourself um, sometimes is easy for some people and not others. Um, I'm definitely not a salesperson, but I'm more than happy to um, recommend for people that have a product that I adore. So, Maybe you need to find a marketing sister in our group oh. that is willing to exchange services. They do the marketing and sales for you and they get to attend your seminar or have personal coaching classes in exchange for that. It's genius. Um, another thought is reaching out to a university. We've got what, two and some community colleges um, become a case study for a marketing class. How would these college students that need to earn credit market your business or put materials together for you? Um, because you're the strong suit, the coach, you need someone's strong suit for marketing. I love that. Thoughts. Yeah. So can I, I, I'm going to ask a question. I know I'm supposed to be silent, but those of you that know me well know that's hard for me. Um, so the, like the class, like it would be a very intimate, maybe like five people, and um, we're going to cover these three topics and those maybe, you know, three or four 30 minute topics and it's this much money. Right. And my thought here is don't undersell yourself. I'm not saying come in with some unreasonable price tag that people aren't going to do. But if you um, like in consulting jobs and I'm thinking more of like architectural or things like that, if your price is too low, people lose faith in your product. So you want to make sure that you have the right um, pricing level so that it is worth your while to do it, but also that you are not undercutting your service. Super helpful. Um, before we go on to the next person, I'll share with you guys. I'm thinking about actually, so that would be great for virtual. 
I was thinking about doing some workshops here. I've got a pretty big backyard and I could like do the social distancing thing and do some in-person workshops here. So that's something I'm kind of playing around with. So maybe think about that as we go through. I love that idea. And I'll, I'll have to definitely play with that. Um, did you have anything else, Anne, or should I go on to the next sister? Right now, I think I've got my, <laughs> my highlighted one. <laughs> That's perfect. Thanks. And then we, we will, um, at the end, see if anybody has anything to add. Sarah, did you want to go next? Yeah. Um, right, I've written loads of notes. So um, here goes. <laughs> um, I think we have 650 members. I do feel like there's a core amount of women that reply on a regular basis um, that, you know, it might be like the top 50 people. Yes. Um, and I do wonder whether there's any legs in having a free of charge group where people get a flavor of what we're about. There's like lots of informal chats. There might be one event per month and then there's a members area or a separate group or part of it. I don't know what platform you'd use, whether Facebook would be the right platform, but you would have a, a membership only group where there's more content, more exclusive content, uh, slightly more events. Um, and it, you could have, well, depending on how big this grows, you could have multiple different levels of membership potentially. Um, and when you typically join Facebook groups, you have to answer some questions. And I think that's actually a really good way to learn about the members. So you might set, want to set those questions and think about what you want to ask. So what do you want to get out of this group? And hopefully you can record the answers somewhere efficiently. And then you can target those particular members or you can categorize your members based on what they want. And then you can help recommend and, and tag people and various things like that. Um, I think what, I can't remember whether it was Anne or um, Stacy talked about marketing and insight. I do feel like this is a great community, but there will be other communities out there uh, that do similar types of things. I'm not aware of any, um, but it's, I wonder whether there's um, any opportunity to take any best practice from any other online communities to see how they've, they've turned it into a business. Um, cause you'll have peers, Carla, I'm sure that, that you know of and, and that do similar things. Um, I think the, all the merchandise is really nice. You've got a really clear brand identity, which I love. Um, but it'd be great to have, whether it's probably going to be on your website, but having a merchandising area. So you can get the online, the digital journal, you can get the printed journal which i write loads of notes the printed <laughs> journal is perfect for me um where you might keep printouts of you know when you're doing quizzes on people's values or or you know how to schedule your time or whatever all those kind of uh, things that you share on your various webinars all kind of in one place um i think what what you need to think about and have a strategy on is how to drive engagement for those quiet members. So you've got lots of the core 50 or core 20, and then you've got everyone else that, you know, what, what kind of triggers for them? And I think by asking the questions at the start, and I think it's just having a, a wide and diverse uh, content and all of your content is really authentic and I love it. Um, but kind of maybe think about, you know, topical things around mental health or COVID-19 or, um, or things like that, that might kind of draw different uh, viewpoints and discussion points. Um, the other thing that I wrote down was when, when, sorry, if I'm taking more than five minutes. No, no, but, no, you're good. Um, we have time. We're good. We have a half hour still, so we're good. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, when in the UK, if you've got a charity, for example, you have a set of trustees who are making sure the health of the charity is and all the, the charity is run correctly. Um, and it, it's a voluntary post, but say if I became a trustee, I would get experience of how that business was run. I got different, I got different experiences. 
but I just wonder whether in this, in your business, in your group, would you benefit from having a set of trustees Mm. or however you want to call them who, if there's a, like Anne said, a specialist in sales who's looking to give back to support other women um, and there's some sort of trade-off somehow um, who have specific talents that where it's not just content driven from you. Other people could then generate content. It does become more of a community where other people can create workshops and other people can host webinars and, and you, you might want to give people opportunity to sell their coaching uh, businesses or sell their kind of products maybe. Um, and then I think I've got, one more thing and the last thing is there's lots of um content on the facebook group i think it just needs to be categorized a bit better so people can find it and um whether you can do like a a one minute or 30 second intro to what the content is on video before potentially people might want to purchase a copy of it or agree to um pay however do- how many dollars to attend um just to give people an intro so that there's my 10 things that i would do um but i, I really want to support you on this i think it's a great community that you're building it's it helped me so much get through this really hard time um to have like-minded women who i can post something and i get instant responses that aren't in my detail and in my world, they're unemotional, they're practical, they're, they're really great responses that you just, you know, when you ask your mum something, she'll just see it to <laughs> protect me. And, but it's, it's different to that. You, you're getting actual professional women answering really hard career questions. Um, and it's really helped me. So all I can say is thank you, Carla. And hopefully that will, those little bits have helped. No, that helps a lot. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I, you know, I love the mix in the group because you've got, you know, full-time entrepreneurs, you've got corporate career professionals, and we've got people that are corporate career professionals with a side hustle, right? We've got stay-at-home moms that are trying to help, you know, um, with a family income. So I just love the diversity in the group. So yeah, thank you for that. So I think we have left us, do we have three, four Rise Sisters left? So who would like to go next? Raise your hand, lovely. Okay, uh, Rhonda. Hello. So Carla, um, I, I agree with what everyone else has been saying and Sarah just said it too, that the, the community that you've built and the support it provides is huge. And I was thinking about, you said your struggle is you don't want people to think you brought them in to build this to charge them for something, <laughs> Yes. right? So while you were saying that, I was thinking about Sparkle and Rise, and the next level is like pixie dust. It's where the magic happens. Oh. So if you're going to monetize it, um, you know, kind of think about that. Like the things that you're offering are things people really want and need to help them move forward in their careers or in their lives. So don't undersell what you are bringing to the market. And it's kind of like that salt and pepper story you shared before about this is salt, this is pepper, this is what I'm worth. Yes. Selling your business is the same thing. I mean, look at all these women that have come from all over the world because there's a need. So just keep that in mind as you're working through this business plan. I thought Anne's idea was amazing about getting a marketing class to help you. Um, And to build on something Anne said about monetizing the classes you have, you may wanna think about doing like a bundle pass. So maybe you've got four or five things you're offering and one price gets you into one, but maybe there's some kind of discount if they buy a three pass to get into three different sessions, just so that you know that you've got money coming in and people scheduled. Um, and in those classes, you may also want to think about building on what Stacy said around just getting that business intelligence, building in a survey at the end of the class and including questions like, what would you like to see in the future? Because that also gives you some input into what people are looking for. Um, one tool that you could use is SurveyMonkey. I'm sure there's lots more out there, but it's really user-friendly. You could build in three or four questions, and um, it might be good to partner with someone who's got experience writing those types of things so you get actual data back that you can use, not just, yeah, we liked it, because you can't really use that moving forward. Um, and I think someone else said this too, but looking for someone that can mentor you in selling 
to help you get over whatever the hurdles are that you're struggling with. And you also mentioned you struggle with launching things. Like you get it already, but there's a struggle around the launch. So same kind of thing. I maybe meet with some other sisters or other people that, that work in that piece of it of launching a product and figure out where your stumbling blocks are. Because if you know what's holding you back, then you can figure out how to get around it. And that's, that's what I've got. I love it. Thank you so much. All right. Who would like to go next? So who, I, I'm trying to, I, th I think we have Stacy, Sandy, and Anna. So Anna is our, uh, also new, Beth and Anna are new. So Anna's going to go next. This Anna. is really amazing. And I just want to tell you that I'm, I'm so happy to be here. And it's an honor to, to get to know all of you at, at this level. Um, I so have empathy for you, Carla, because <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of where you are <laughs> I'm listening to all this and taking copious notes, um, which is probably why I'm a chicken and, and don't want to stay in consulting. Um, I love my work. I want to work. I don't want to market. And yes. <laughs> so it's really tough because you, if you want to work, you must market. So, um, you know, I, I, I do training for a living, right? I've got some great programs, both off the shelf and things that I've done myself. Um, but getting them out there is, is such a challenge. It's so impressive though, because you've built your, you've got your Sparkle and Rise group, you know, so you, you have a great base or foundation already. Um, and I think all of the ideas that, that people have said um, are, are tremendous. Um, yeah, Anne, I think your idea about using a case study, you know, I taught at university level for a while. Case studies are hard to, to come up with, real live ones, unless you go to Harvard Business, you know, review and buy them for I don't know how much anymore. Um, so I think that's, that's a great idea. Um, but I think, I think partnering, I mean, I would love to partner with you because it's hard to do it all yourself. I still meet weekly with our team that was eliminated um, in downtown Phoenix at, at a huge corporation. And we've created lots of programs um, that we want to launch and we're collaborating and we're sharing. And I think when you're on your own, that's the best way I think to do it because everybody has a little bit of expertise. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. Scott's real, he's, he's getting, you know, the, the software to do registrations and to get payments and all that. I don't know how to do that. I mean, I can learn it. I, you know, and I've been teaching virtually for over 10 years. So I've got that expertise. I know how to create programs that engage people and use, you know, breakout rooms and do all of that stuff. Um, so I think finding one or two people that have that expertise um is to me is key you know and, I, and i'm making this all about me i know that <laughs> no 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 but, but i mean it resonates so much from this because it's <laughs> I, I feel like we're in a parallel universe here and i'm getting a lot a lot from that but we can't do it all and i think that's what i've learned through this whole summer is we we need each other whoever we are we all need to come together and help each other because you can't do it alone and um no matter what experts we are in our field you know everybody adds such such values so i think collaborating and um and finding people that that you trust that that need you as much as you need them and we you know we all need each other but some people don't recognize it as readily as others i think that um, I think that would be a great start. So I just kind of reiterated what everybody said in a different way. <laughs> no, no, that's good. This is what happens though. You like, you get into it and if you go last, so Stacy and Sandy are in the <laughs> last seat. It's like, oh, what do I add to that? Cause you know, they've, they've all shared what I was thinking. Um, but so thank you for that. Stacy, or would you be ready to go next? So, um, the first thing that comes to mind, Carla, is like, this is almost emotional for me for whatever reason, but I feel like when you started this group, your, 
your heart and soul you've always said is supporting the women in this group. So the quote that comes to mind for me is see what you have, love what you see. So you have 600 women in this group and everything you're doing outside, okay? Everything you're doing outside, your consulting, your keynote speaking, all of those things are on the external. And so you need to bring those to the internal of the group that you have. So to me, the heart of Sparkle and Rise is that concept of supporting the groups. And so you're going from an external, you're feeding into everyone else's businesses, and now you're gonna switch and you're gonna feed into individual people. That's a big difference between the two. And so I think when you bring Carla in to the center of this group, it's the heart of this group, it's not gonna lose its sense. Because that's one of the things, every time you're starting to make a move, you're like, I don't wanna move the heart of this. And so I know in previous sister circles, we've talked about, um, it's a community of, of, of women that are coming together. And I love the part of partnering or collaborating because you can't do it alone. And that's what I love about this group is you have nine women. There's nine women on this call right now. There are nine strategic pieces to bring a vision together, whether it's Carla's vision or Rhonda's vision or Sarah's vision, it doesn't matter. But there's, I don't know, I feel like we're always looking on the outside and I feel like it's time to start looking on the inside. So whether it be 600 women, whether it be nine women, look on the inside of what you already have. You have 600 professional women in a group. That is a sister circle. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of women. This, this group, just nine women. Think about nine women that are on this group. There's a lot of power in the women just in this group. So I feel like we have to stop looking on the outside. It, it drives me crazy that everybody's always looking for what is out there when you have everything in here, whether it's individually as this nine women or 600 women. And so, you know, I love, I don't know who said it, but somebody said that, you know, if, if nine people bring their pieces in, and you need marketing. What are the two things you need? You need marketing and, and how to launch things. Okay. You have 600 women. Go out there, put it out there, find out who's marketing, interview them and put your pieces together. It's a puzzle. And you're powerful. You have online courses. Um, take your online course itself. Break a couple pieces out for an introduction. Get your feet wet. Maybe you run, like uh, I think Anne said, 30 minutes. I know of somebody that for her business, I highly respect her, is she does like hour and a half little seminars and you could charge anywhere from $99 to $149. You make it so you bring more people in and then from there you, you up level. So it's the same thing in this group. You have 600 women. I love the fact that you put stuff out there to see what they want, see if they raise their hands for it. Then you take that group and you somehow formulate like the membership thing. I think um, Sarah was talking about that is I'm in a group right now, the wellness universe. If you want to talk to somebody and Anna Pereira is amazing at it. She has created an empire in the health and wellness industry with wellness practitioners. And she has a free site. She has, now they're all paid. The intro site, the middle and the premiere. She has affiliate programs in there. She has um, educational seminar opportunities for anybody that's a member that can teach. Um, so I think that there's ways within this group that if you offer something, they're gonna raise their hand or they're not. And, um, but I, I just have such a heart for seeing what is already in front of you. You have all of your pieces. 
So you don't need to get any more pieces. Use what you already have and put them together. And I think that that will, that will help. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sandy Boucher. You got your Kleenex ready, hon? I know. <laughs> I've, I've already a couple of times been like, oh, yeah, because you know, I'm going to do what I do best and I'm going to make you cry, <laughs> but, but in a good way. You know, I love you. <laughs> so a couple of things that came out. And of course, I love, like, I took tons of notes, guys. Like, I almost want to do this monthly. It's like, okay, let's, <laughs> what are these great <laughs> ideas? Because like, holy moly, I know my business is going to benefit from the notes here. But Carla, specifically for you and your challenge, and we've had this conversation. You know that in March, when my business crashed and burned, because motivational speaker, you can't be out there doing seminars. I had made my living for 11 years working with women and helping them to overcome when the bottom fell out, when the relationship ended, when someone they loved died, when whatever the case may be, when they lost their career. So when my bottom fell out <laughs> in March, <clears throat> what I realized was this was a huge opportunity to practice what I preach. That I can't be telling people, I believe in you and you can do this if I wasn't willing to take the same journey. The first thing that came to my mind is you are a strategic change consultant. <laughs> what are you going through right now? Strategic change. <laughs> like, honey, <laughs> you teach other people to go through what you're doing right now. And the only difference is it's you. So take you out of the equation. Client A is going through this challenge. What would you tell her to do? What would be the steps? You know this, right? But because it's personal and emotional and really close, we can't see the forest for the trees, right? So the best part, and I know you, it's all about everybody else. You, you do this because you live a life of service. It's why I love you. And, and you do everything for everybody else. So while you're going through this process, know they will learn from your process. Every step you take, you are the example to so many. So don't think of it as being selfish or doing it for you because so many are watching as you rise and shine and sparkle and we're cheering you on. So first off, practice what you preach, hon. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, your dream business was helping professional women to rise. You do that every single day. We got to figure out how you can make money at doing this so you can do it full time, but know you're living your dream already. So get comfy with that. Embrace it. Pat yourself on the back. You are a gift to us all. So check. That one's done. You were worried about sparkle and rise and people thinking you did this just to sell something. Okay, well, there's nine people in this room that would call BS on that one faster than anything, right? We'd be jumping down the throats of anyone that said anything like that. But there's, if someone joined like a week from now and what they saw was a couple product promotions right away, okay, I can see maybe they would get that feeling. So there's two ways, two important things about this. One, the about section in your group. Make sure it talks about the journey, the story, why you started this, how long you went before you even introduced a product. So that no matter when someone joins, they have that reference, right? Your story is right there. Secondly, we just studied Brene Brown. <laughs> you got to develop your square squad. When you say, I don't want them thinking, who's them? Does them even matter, right? Like who knows you and whose opinion matters to you? Because you will die on the vine trying to please everybody, right? You, the people that know you love you for what you do and make sure to feed that spirit and that always stay true to that. 
if someone that comes in out of nowhere and decides to judge you, that's probably a lot more about their baggage than who you are, mm -hmm. right? So square squad, make sure you stay focused on the people that matter. Um, I suck at launching. <laughs> There's the most positive statement I've ever heard. <laughs> That's empowering. Let's repeat that and put it on a t-shirt. So you don't. You need more skills at it. Yeah. We all sucked at walking. We sucked at riding a bike. We sucked at public speaking until we got more skills. So all you need is more skills. Uh, by the way, just FYI, and this is 110% business advice. <laughs> um, be really careful the products you launch because, and what I mean by is who's your competition. Like I always get nervous when I used to have a speakers network, I would get nervous when someone wanted to go in and talk about sales. Cause it's like, do you know the big hitters you're going to go up against to try to find a market? Digital journals and journals are the same thing. There are so many people out there now coming from someone who has written three books. And my first two are bestsellers, which means they've sold more than 10,000 copies. Just to give you an idea, I couldn't sustain myself on product sales. I would have starved a long time ago. Product sales is icing on the cake. Products, they want to buy the journal because they love being a rise sister. They want to be by the journal because they're one of our professional women and they want to go to that next level, right? So it's icing on the cake. So as much as yes, you have to launch and promote that product, don't put all your energy there, tack it on to that bigger support, that bigger message. Uh, by the way, the fact that you sold any uh, kudos, right? So just keep going. It's not about 500 in one day at a launch. It's about evergreen, right? Making it easy for them to find it so they can buy one tomorrow and one six months from now. Um, your network, someone mentioned it and I was like, oh my God, the fact that you have 600 women <laughs> that have come together in a group, you do realize that there's professionals like me who would pay money to be able to do a webinar to that network, right? Or would pay money to be able to market something to that network. You have the right to ask for those fees. And if you built in a structure, again, it's not all about marketing because the only people that would access it are the people that are interested in doing that. And you can make sure that whatever we offer, whether it's a speech or a product or whatever, fits the spirit of Rise Sisters. You are that, that checks and balance, right? You wouldn't just open it up wide. You wouldn't open it up to just anyone. And who signs up, it's up to them if they take the class, right? Um, don't like marketing. There's another one of those sentences that must never, ever get on a t-shirt. <laughs> don't like marketing or don't like selling, okay? And it's just the words, right? We market and sell every single day. If you talk your husband into going to your favorite restaurant tonight, I'm sorry, that's marketing and selling, right? You sold him on the idea, right? You promoted it first as a great restaurant. Remember how much fun we had last time? That's marketing. And if he goes, you sold him, right? All I do, and I learned this from one of my training, is it's the power of 10. If you're gonna charge 20 bucks, give them $200 in value. So that they're always going, holy crap, this is such a great deal, right? And yes, you can, can't undersell your product because you don't want it to look cheap. But we can also, when you're promoting the value of it and making this exclusive to Rise Sisters, then they understand why there might be a discount involved. And the last one is the one I talked to you about the other day. And seriously, girl, we got to talk. For anyone that's established in business to go to that next level is promotional partners. You do something I promote it to my list. And if anyone from my list buys it, we split it 50 50 and I do the same. You promote mine. If anyone from your list gets it, you get 50%. That's how the big hitters do it. It opens you up to my entire list of people. 
I'm open to your entire list and we both benefit from it, right? That's the power of having a network. I've looked into trying to do promotional partners for ages, but anyone who wanted to partner with me didn't have a following. So of course they want to access my network, but they didn't have a network. So it's like, wait a minute, I'm not getting any bonus <laughs> out of this. <laughs> I don't want your three people. <laughs> like nothing personal, but it, it can only work with someone that's established and has a following. So you're not going to lose Sparkle and Rise. The only way you could change the vibe of that group is if you start selling the stuff you're already giving for free. And I would highly suggest don't. Don't ever charge for a sister circle. Don't charge for a happy hour. Don't charge for anything that you're already offering. But anything over and above that, you have already given so much. Anything over and that, above that, give us the opportunity to support you. Like I said the other day, money is trying to get to you. You got to quit. You got to unlock <laughs> the dang door and quit saying, no, I can't charge. Yes, yes, you can. Right? Because we want you around. We love this network and we need it to be here 10 years from now. So there's my two cents. Love you. Well, thank you. Love you too. You guys are amazing. Um, I'll share my thoughts here in the end um, it, real quick. Did anybody, because sometimes they have extra thoughts. Is that Anne? Well, I'd love to share some extra thoughts, but I actually have a work meeting I have to jump on to. Oh, yes. Um, so sorry. I love this group. Love you. And thank you so much. And I've got a couple of contact names that if they aren't already in our group, they should be. And, and they're experts in several different things. So I will reach out to you after. Okay, my perfect. Thank you, Anne. Bye. Take care. Bye. Um, anybody else have any quick comments? And then I'll just kind of share my big key takeaways. I don't see anybody raising yeah. their hand. Yes. Stacy. I... I just want Carla to show up as Carla being Carla every day because that's what you do for this group. And so being Carla is, is powerful and she needs to, she needs to come out and be vulnerable and that's what you're doing right now. And I just think that, um, you know, one thing that Sandy said that spoke out to me is that, um, you know, everything is figure outable. You always tell me that, right? And so I think just taking the, um, stop doing so many things and start being, start being Carla and show up as Carla because she already knows. You already know all the things. It's just scary. So I just wanted to encourage you because you're, you're a beautiful soul and you don't think you're ever going to, that's never going to change unless she doesn't show up. Thank you, Stacy. Um, Sandy, I saw your hand come up. Did you have one? Yeah, thing? just one last thing, and thank you so much for reminding me, Stacy. Um, I guess it was the main point I wanted to make, and totally forgot to make it when I started babbling. Carla, your belief in us is undeniable. Like, I mean, you are there to support us every single day. What you need to do now is put you in the group and support you and believe in you as much as you believe in us. You can do this. You, you're yeah. made to do this, like Stacy said. And if you don't, if you doubt that on a given day, all you can do is reach out to one of us because we'll be happy to remind you why you can do this. But the only one you need to believe in now is you, because we do. Well, thank you. All right, here comes the, uh, the tears. Oh man, where do I start? First of all, just amazing uh, experience, the sister circle. It's funny because I've been in the circle, the sun's coming back up again, um, but not had a circle before. And I just so value all of you. Thank you so much for sharing. I am glad I have this recorded because I got a lot to think about as I go back through. Um, so some of the things that just really resonated with me are um, this idea of creating some exclusive membership type of a of a package and I don't know exactly what that's going to include but I wrote down several ideas that you guys shared and I I love that idea it's funny I've thought about doing 
apply. I've thought about doing a membership before and I, it, I've like gone, it's weird, right? Like I'll think about it and I'll, I'll write a path and then I'll be like, no, that doesn't feel right. And so I won't, but it keeps coming back. Like every time I try to step away from it, it comes back. So I really need to sit down, rewatch this and think about that. Um, something I had, so I do workshops. I hadn't thought about doing like maybe a three to five person workshop, making it a little bit more intimate and having it be a series. I'm, that is resonating very strongly with me. Um, it, it's funny because integrating what I do in corporate with what, you know, my passion is for the group is not something that I've thought of before. I don't know why, because it's kind of obvious if you take a step back. Uh, I do have this skill in how to be a transformational leader through change. And I could develop a workshop for the Rye sisters to say, this is how you do that. This is how you communicate. This is how you build a coalition of support in, you know, your corporate role as you're rolling out these new programs and services as an entrepreneur, as you're, you know, creating big change in your business, which is what I'm doing. Um, but I could totally create that package. Um, I like the idea of incorporating questions that are going to give me insight into what people want and then asking them what they want. I'm also a big, uh, this idea of the trustees, I'm going to have to think through that. It, it, what would that group look like? And they could also be my litmus test to say, hey, you know, Carla, this post, it just kind of didn't, didn't really fit with the theme of what we're creating here. Like, um, you know, just to make sure that we keep the heart of the group where it needs to be. Um, I like Rhonda's um, idea of the pixie dust and kind of where the magic happens and keeping all of these things for free and then saying, if you want more, it's over here and here's what that looks like. Like, it doesn't have to be a pressure thing. It's just, it's an offer. And if you don't, that's fine because none of this is gonna go away. This is still all here for you. Um, putting the pieces together, really recognizing that it's there and looking, I wrote down Anna Pereira's name, Stacy. So really looking at what other people are doing in membership and getting creative about that. The thing that's held me back from membership is the, so I'm in one and it's a, a whole separate part of their website. And there's all these classes and there's all this stuff. And I realize she's built it over time, but it's freaking overwhelming. So I look at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not there yet, but I gotta, it's, it's baby steps. Um, the power of 10, I love that. You know, if you pay $20, you get $200 worth of value, really making that exclusive. Um, and the idea that the products are really the icing on the cake, I gotta remember that. Like, I'm not gonna get rich off the journals. Um, I love the journals. I actually, I actually do that journaling practice every day. I've done it for a year and a half and it's made a huge difference in my life. So um, the idea that it's out there as an offer to help Rise Sisters, I just got to remember, you know, that's what it is. And whoever it resonates with, that'll, that'll be what, um, that, it'll, it'll hit the right people. Uh, yeah, lots, lots and lots and lots to think about. And I just so appreciate you guys. And I appreciate you being willing to jump on video and share with others what this is like because I feel like that's vulnerable for all, all of you guys too knowing I'm going to go you know do my crazy social media post um, I do think that as women there's just a huge need for a group like this where you can be vulnerable you can talk about what you're struggling with and you can get this kind of love and support so I just appreciate you guys so much um, thank you for being part of my sister circle thank you thank you Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, so, much, so much to think about. All right, guys, have a lovely day. You've made mine better, and I'll see you over in the Facebook group. Sounds great. Take Bye. care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. All the best, everyone. You too. Bye. You Bye. Too. Bye, guys.